start by telling you how this collaboration came to life. My name is Howard Stone. I'm a professor in mechanical and aerospace engineering at Princeton. In mid-July, Elizabeth Bowman, the PR director for the Met Orchestra, approached Dr. Simon Levin, a Princeton colleague in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology, about ideas to help the Met Orchestra musicians learn more about airflows associated with musical performances. Professor Levin, in turn, approached Professor Vince Poor, a professor in electrical engineering at Princeton, who was studying how the virus spreads through networks of people. Professor Poor was aware that my research group was studying experimentally airflows associated with speech in order to learn more about possible airborne transmission of the virus from asymptomatic individuals. Within a short time, we were having discussions and planning meetings, via Zoom, of course, with Elizabeth and Met Orchestra performers, including Demian Austin, Carrie Doctor, and Stephanie Mortimer. Our group also included Princeton professors Levin, Poor, and Andrew Morovsik, who was very knowledgeable about opera, my postdoc, Philip Borian, and my colleague, Manu Kapkarian, a leading French researcher who was visiting my laboratory when the pandemic shut down the university. Manuk and I had been dis working on these questions of airflow and possible transmission in speech since March. These meetings helped outline the questions that needed answering and offered a strategy for moving forward with a study with the Met Orchestra musicians. When I was conducting the experiment in the lab, I was immediately surprised by the exceptional control that an opera singer can have on the flow they exhale during a performance. So we were starting the experiment with um, a visualization of the flow uh, exhaled by using an infrared high speed camera uh, able to track the exhaled CO2. So that's something we have already used as an experimental tool to uh, quantify things uh, during a standard respiration or during a conversation. And, and, and what you see then is the fact that you generate as you speak. Uh, or as you breathe, you generate uh, uh, very fast uh, air jets, uh, which can travel at distance larger than a meter in, in, in less than a second. And the, the contrast with the singer was striking immediately just because you can notice that the flow rate was much more, much slower and much well controlled. So we, we move then to a more, uh, precise and accurate experiment where we were able to measure the expiratory flow rate, which means the volume of air exhaled per unit of time. So I asked first the singer to, to speak and to breathe through the, the device. And, and what we noticed there were, were pretty standard in the sense that it was exactly the same kind of measurement that you can have on a normal person, where you basically see a flow rate, which is fluctuating a lot, uh, but reaching a very high value. When I asked them to sing, uh, the exact opposite happens. It was totally remarkable to see that they were able to exhale a constant flow rate at a rather low uh, value. So it's pretty obvious that for them, it's, it's important to train on that aspect to control the flow rate they exhale. Uh, but it's remarkable how well they managed to, to do it. Our work is continuing, but I want to make clear that this is just the beginning. We were hoping to make experimental measurements on all of the common orchestral instruments that are capable of spreading aerosols. In addition, we hope to identify effective ventilation guidelines for performing arts halls. Although we are currently motivated by the public health issues and restrictions that are created by the pandemic, I would like to add that this research is important even without a vaccine, because it is entirely possible that we might find ourselves in another pandemic some years down the road. Even if this does not happen again in our lifetime, and I hope it does not, it is nevertheless good to be prepared and to have strategies in place for mitigating the impact of major disruptions, since we have unfortunately seen the cultural devastation that can otherwise occur.